Our weekly series with the Innocence Project continues as we turn our attention to a case out of Texas. Derek Walton has spent more than a decade behind bars for a crime he says he didn't commit. He was convicted of murder in 2007 and sentenced to 45 years in prison for his alleged role in a fatal shooting outside of a Texas nightclub. In April of this year, the lead prosecutor in Walton's case, Ralph Petty, was ordered to surrender his law license for misconduct of an extraordinary scope. In 2019, lawyers working on a death penalty case uncovered evidence showing that during his 18 years at the DA's office, Petty also did legal work for at least nine judges on cases including 355 that he himself prosecuted. Last week, Clinton Young, a man facing the death penalty and convicted by Petty, had his conviction overturned. Now Derek Walton is hoping he could also get his conviction thrown out. Joining me now to talk about Derek's case is Allison Clayton, Deputy Director of the Innocence Project of Texas, and Elsa Alcala, a former judge and board member for the Innocence Project of Texas. Welcome to you both. Hey. All right, Allison, Derek is currently in year 14 of a 45 year sentence and he's always maintained his innocence. Would you briefly walk us through the facts of his case? Absolutely. So the facts of the case are pretty simple. It's what we see in a lot of cases. Um, and that is there was a fight outside of a nightclub and someone ended up dead. I mean, that's the, 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 the bottom line of, of the case. There was a, a chaotic scene in a very rough neighborhood where there were kind of warring factions. It wasn't like a gang kind of thing, but there were people who, were, who had animosity towards one another and they got into a fight outside of a bar. And uh, in the chaos of everything, guns were drawn and a man ended up dead. Um, the police arrived on the scene. Everything was just total chaos. And um, the police saw a car taking off in a pile of, you know, uh, the, the cloud of dust following the car. Um, they interviewed many witnesses because there were just a ton of people on the scene, like I said, very chaotic. They interviewed 40 or 50 witnesses. They really didn't get any leads. Um, then they issued a, a Crime Stopper tip, which of course we have a, we see a lot of problems with Crime Stopper tips, right? Because then you incentivize somebody to say mm -hmm, something, mm -hmm. to, to, turn, to turn on somebody. So um, whether that's accurate or not. So eventually after the Crime Stopper tip is released, Mr. Walton becomes a suspect. The problems with Mr. Walton's case are that all of the evidence against him come from people. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, you really have to base your opinion on cases, base right. everything that you're thinking about on the facts of the case. And in this instance, the facts of the case just weren't there. Well, during the trial, Allison, well, during the trial, uh, Derek's attorney made some wild analogies as part of his defense. During closing arguments, he compared Derek's case to the American Revolution and the John Wayne movie, um, The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. We know there's this massive issue yeah. of prosecutorial misconduct here, but did Derek also receive ineffective assistance of counsel? We're always cautious about making claims before we can really run them down. But I will say that in many of these cases, in fact, pretty much all of our cases, we see a failing of the justice system at multiple levels, right? So we see instances where you have incentivized witnesses um, who we believe were not telling the truth like we have in Derek's case. We have instances of potential ineffective assistance of counsel. We have issues of potential prosecutorial misconduct. Um, it is not uncommon to have all of these issues at play in one case, and Mr. Walton's case is no different. We have the criminal justice system failing him on multiple levels. Ralph Petty, the lead prosecutor in Derek's case, is no longer allowed to practice law in Texas. Now, for decades, he's worked both as a prosecutor and a paid advisor for at least nine different judges. Elsa, as the former judge, um, would you explain for our viewers why this is so incredibly egregious? This is really one of those cases where um, truth is stranger than fiction. I've never heard of a situation like this happening and I cannot imagine any lawyer out there, any judge out there 
who would just put on their common sense hat for just a minute, who would think that this would be okay. And the fact that in Midland, uh, all of the judges there practically, and the prosecutor believed that this was okay, really should make us question uh, the integrity of the justice system and, and the people who serve it. Um, Ralph Petty uh, actually appeared in Clinton Young's case. Uh, he filed motions for the state, for the prosecutors in the Clinton Young case. He appeared in court and he argued motions in court before the judge in Clinton Young's case. And he actually drafted the motion denying habeas, I'm sorry, the order denying habeas relief that the judge signed. He involved both as a prosecutor in the case, but then also in drafting the order that the judge issued. It, it baffles the mind that anybody could think that that was okay. It, it just, it, it, it's not even arguably okay. And for that reason, the Court of Criminal Appeals granted an, an entirely new trial to Clinton Young. Well, Petty losing his law license, Elsa, is just one half of the equation. What about these, these judges that he was helping um, advise? Uh, they're still sitting on the bench. Is there, are they going to be facing any accountability? I'm not sure if anybody has filed a complaint with the, with the Judicial Conduct Commission, but if, if they haven't, they certainly should. Uh, judges are bound to behave ethically, and judges should not even have the appearance of impropriety. So even if, uh, let's say, Petty didn't actually work hands-on in a particular case in front of that judge, um, in, in the sense that he didn't appear for the prosecutors in that particular case, Nonetheless, the, the, DA, the uh, judges knew that he was working as a DA and that they were paying him. And that, to me, at a, at a bare minimum, violates the canons of judicial ethics. That is just mind-boggling to me. Okay, Allison, last question to you. Uh, the legal ramifications of this are already being felt. In September, the Texas Court of uh, Criminal Appeals tossed out the capital murder conviction and death sentence of Clinton Young someone petty prosecuted. How do you see his disbarment impacting Derek's case? And, and what about all the other people convicted, especially those still in prison? I think that we would have difficulty fathoming the potential fallout from the Ralph Petty debacle. I mean, Clinton Young is just the tip of the iceberg. I know I personally have done all kinds of work on the Ralph Petty stuff. And we're talking about hundreds, if not thousands, of defendants who could be impacted by Petty's wrongdoing, by this wrongdoing coming to light. So we're very hopeful that it's going to be, um, that's going to have an impact in Derek Walton's case. Uh, it, it should, because prosecutorial misconduct is always unacceptable. And, you know, if there was at any point that it could have played in Mr. Walton's conviction, then that needs to be addressed. And we're hoping that it will be. Allison Clayton, Deputy Director of the Innocence Project of Texas, and Elsa Alcala, former judge and board member of the organization. Thanks to you both for your efforts and time tonight. Thank you.